Hi, welcome to our afternoon tea with Roz and Shelley. Welcome, Roz Strayer. I'm Shelley Davenport with The Open Door. I'm a principal interior designer here based in Great Falls, Virginia. And I have with me today, Roz Dreyer. Um, luckily, we've been able to do these afternoon teas while we're all sheltering in place. So we thought this would be a perfect opportunity to actually share the history of not only serving afternoon tea, but the history of tea itself. Welcome, Roz. You have such a beautiful table set. Well, thank you, Shelley, and welcome to you, too. So let's just jump right in, and why don't we talk a little bit about tea itself and the history behind that in serving it? Sure. It's actually really, really interesting, and you know it's a bit of a passion for me. Um, the Chinese have been drinking tea since 3000 BC, and it didn't gain in popularity to about 250 AD. By then, of course, China were the only people who could do it, the only people in town. But it actually didn't become popular until the 1660s in Europe or the Western kind of worlds as we know it now, until that King Charles II, through his wife, discovered tea. He liked it so much, and so did the people around him, that he decided he wanted to compete with the market that China had. So having the good contact to India, as the Brits did at that time, he started the East Indian Trading Company. And they did that to start trading tea the same as China did. He wanted to gain the market share. During this time, um, there were other competitors, but to, in order to stop them, King Charles II put on a huge levy on tax on them so that nobody else could get into the game at all. And it was really in the 1840s when the Duchess of Bedford, um, and this, you won't actually believe this, the afternoon tea came around because we discovered the kerosene light. So that's why I go back to 1840. The light was so huge because it meant that one cooks could cook later at night, excuse my fun, <laughs> and the fact that uh, people could eat later. And it became a bit of a status, and I guess it still is in Europe, eat late. And so they used to get up early still for the farms, and then they would have lunch at a normal time, but they wouldn't eat dinner to, or even start dinner until like 7.30 or 8 o'clock. And that left the Duchess of Bedford very hungry, so she started having afternoon tea and made a sandwich and started inviting friends. And of course, she knew people in high places for a family, and they gave their seal on it, so it really just took off from there. Oh, that's great. That's so interesting. So what would you serve at a traditional afternoon tea? Well, actually, mine is about as traditional as they get. <laughs> I have the four very first sandwiches, which is egg sandwich, ham sandwich, um, uh, uh, cucumber, and smoked salmon. They were the original four sandwiches. It's also served with scones or scones, if you prefer, with a preserve of some kind. And English clotted cream is usually what it's served with. It's beautiful. So, and then the tea itself, would, you, would that be a black tea that they would have served or would it have been a, a different type of tea? Well, actually, we all started with black tea. Um, and believe it or not, just referring back to what I was saying, it came from the Chinese because when they had their monopoly and it got revamped, as it were, to go against the Brits, they realized that their green tea didn't travel very well. So they started using black tea instead, as the Brits were doing from the get-go. And it was a little more bitter to them than they were used to. And that's why we started adding milk. Interesting. So if you were a hostess and you were serving, what's the proper way to serve the tea? Okay, so protocol is, and this goes back to those questions that people ask, should the milk go in first or the tea go in first? Actually, it's the tea. So whoever the hostess was always poured the tea, and you've probably seen that in old movies. Shall I pour? You know, it's always the way we do it. But the hostess, or the host in some cases, always poured the tea. But you can only pour one cup and pass it to the person. It's never multi-fill cups. And you always allow people to put their own milk and sugar into it. That's regarded as the thing to do. So I've heard of cream tea and afternoon tea. Could you tell us what the difference is? Absolutely. Afternoon tea is everything you see here. Um, but cream tea is only the dessert part. So it would have the scones with the jam and the cream 
or butter in my case, if anyone's noticed there is actually butter. And um, you would have that with different cakes, such as a Victoria sandwich cake. Guess where that came from? From Victoria's house. Uh, so that's how traditional this is. I don't have one. <laughs> so when was champagne introduced? As far as I can understand, I think that was brought in by the hotels as a money-making machine. Um, I think also women were becoming a little more free and would actually drink more alcohol. But my mother has a little story about that. Like a lot of people in the 50s, we just they lived at a lower level and things weren't so normal to them as they are for us. And so the ladies would get together for afternoon tea because most of them didn't work but they would all take a little bit of money off their weekly budget, whatever. And then they would put it together and buy a bottle of sherry or whatever they could afford and share it and drink that with their afternoon tea. <laughs> oh, that's great. So would they do that weekly or monthly? Usually weekly. Right. So how fun would that be for everyone to get together and share, just like you when you serve your afternoon teas, right? Oh, it's a lot of fun. I love afternoon teas. It's one of my favorite things to do. So how is, so how is tea served today? So it's gone very international. It's definitely, I'm talking as a Brit, you know, it goes back to London. I can hardly recognize afternoon tea. It gives you like a gazillion teas to choose from, which you'll probably get Earl Grey or Assam or something back, back in the day. And you would only have a few sandwiches to choose from. And there is no limit to what you can eat. I've had that asked before. But now it's all, it's just little concoctions that really have nothing to do with afternoon tea. But by the way, I love it. <laughs> but it's not traditional. That's great. So what a great afternoon. Thank you so much, Roz, for sharing uh, the little bit of the history and how we could serve it today. I really appreciate everything that you've shared with us, and I look forward to our tea time next week. Thank you so much. Thank you for hosting. Thank you, Shelley. Bye-bye.